focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. DBS Bank and Money Control present Small Business to Smart Business. Hello and welcome to this podcast on stepping into the digital era with small and medium enterprises, small business to smart business. SMEs, as we know, are crucial to the growth of the economy and they also boost employment. That is why it is important for SMEs to change with change in consumer behavior and adopt to digital transformation, which can help them streamline working processes, increase efficiency and open avenues to new markets. Simply put, going digital can be immensely lucrative growth strategy for SMEs. It can make a huge point of difference if done well. To discuss this and much more, I have with me an esteemed panel, Mr. T. Koshi, MD and CEO ONDC, Mr. Divyesh Dalal, Managing Director and Head, Global Transaction Services, DBS Bank India, and Mr. Anoop Pai, Co-Founder and Chairman, E. Samudai. A very warm welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Koshi, I would like to start with you. You head the Open Network for Digital Commerce. So consumer behavior is always changing and SMEs need to change with it. Because as we say, the smart consumers choose smarter businesses. How do you view this shift? There are two uh, ways to look at it. One is if you look at the current level of participation in the digital market from the buying side, it is only in the range, in the, in, in the range of about 10%. And that means there is a huge headroom for a diverse kind of participation of buyers to come in. The reason that is currently this limited is because the current platform centric approach will focus on their kind of customers who is relevant for them, which is sort of relatively primarily the affluent segment of the society. If we open network, we are going to see a proliferation of diverse kind of buyer application which will bring a different cross-section of the buyers from the affluent class to not so affluent class to the common man. May not, even though there is participation in tier two, tier three cities, you would see that their current participation is again in the affluent class, but it is going to change. So that means the sellers have to be aware that the paradigm shift that is happening on the, buy, the, the buyer uh, population. And <clears throat> And second thing that we need to wear that the, like you very correctly said, more and more young by, uh, na, individuals are becoming more and more digitally, uh, you know, preferring digital medium. While today the uh, commerce is only small percentage of participation in terms of their participation in digital medium for the social media, from Facebook to WhatsApp to Instagram, you know, especially the youngers are all going to that medium. And they will get more and more comfortable in using that channel to buy. So you would see a lot more shift towards preference to digital um, uh, possibilities. So the sellers need to be aware of that. And on the other side, if you look from the seller side, there again, the especially the small and medium enterprises are limited in terms of their participation as a seller in the digital network, um, especially because uh, as we discussed earlier, many of the buying side is not relevant for them or the platforms, terms and conditions uh, um, may not be comfortable for the small enterprises, which would mean that with the increase in uh, diverse kind of seller application, especially focusing on the small and medium enterprises will come up. So now they need to get ready for them to uh, you know make their products visible in a fashion that is meaningful for those crowds who are uh, preferring the, the, the digital route. So this is the kind of transformation that they have to get ready in the next few years as the, the idea of an auto open network become more and more prolific. Right. Uh, Mr. Pai, um, you head the e-Samudai. It's a tech startup with an aim to build a strong local e-commerce network. I wanted to ask the same question to you that consumer behavior is always changing. How do you see the shift in the consumer behavior? Still, um, you know, network today, the platforms are geared for the affluent sector. And, um, you know, uh, the buying population needs to now become more and more, you know, aware about, um, you know, how to buy digitally and what it means for them. 
So the COVID uh, pandemic caused a big change in the way Indians shop, and that's uh, showing up in reports uh, these days. So I think uh, a digital uh, acquisition of goods and services is becoming more and more prevalent, uh, aided by uh, the young population across India. What's not working is the business models underlying the platforms. The platforms have a very extractive method of operating. Uh, their core business model is around monetization of information to to game uh, uh, the behavior of consumer base uh, in the market right so uh, that's the core business model um, and that doesn't work um, you know at uh, lower and lower ends especially given that in the last 14 years uh, the the uh, easy money the low income uh, low interest uh, regime that existed in the market has created a glut of capital going into these uh, platform businesses that's drying up now um, and so now uh, these platforms are, are going for profitability um, um, overall that means that uh, in addition to the information they're harvesting they also want to get financial return out of their investment uh, which is what is uh, creating this uh, great opportunity uh, for networks like ondc and participants like eSamudai that are part of ondc uh, to provide a more equitable uh, digital network for both consumers and and uh, and producers to come together and trade, right? I mean, digitally, that creates formalization potential. And, uh, you know, we see essentially this is a great opportunity for a new way of digita uh, digitizing the world. I mean, it's, uh, it's more decentralized, it's more community driven, where the terms are driven by the participants rather than by the technology providers. So I think that's, a, uh, that's the opportunity we see as eSamudai and, uh, you know, ONDC is a network that we're proud to be part of. Right. In fact, there was an OECD strategy paper which did say that how SMEs are essential for delivering more inclusive growth, how SMEs play a key role in adding value and contributing to the innovation. It is for this reason that the business environment also, I think it's critical to enhance the SME participation. Uh, so I'll come to you, uh, Mr. Dalal, next and ask that what are the key banking solutions and strategies that your bank offers to small businesses to help them adapt to the digital landscape and thrive in the market? Yeah, so, uh, you know, thanks. I think some great uh, inputs from uh, Mr. Koshi as well as Anup. I think some fantastic starting points. But again, I just like to kind of, you know, step back and just take the, you know, the big macro view or the big macro picture out here, right? So historically, if you look at, you know, uh, what have been the key drivers of change? Uh, typically, it's it's uh, government, consumer, technology and regulators, right? These are four big pillars of change in any economy. And typically, when all of these move in the same direction, that's the time you actually see change coming in a country, whether it's ours or any other, right? And I think India is going through that phase wherein all these four pillars are or forces of change are moving in the right direction, right? All of them are moving in the direction of driving or enabling change. And I think that's the basic reason because of which you see, you know, increased adoption of technology. Let's say UPI platform also seeing massive volumes, right? And uh, you also see networks like ONDC, etc., which is going to make significant change, right? So I think these four big forces of change are the ones which are actually going to drive a lot of adoption. Now, what we see in this SME sector or MSMEs also, because individuals like if I am a, you know, an MSME entrepreneur, right, given that I'm already adopted digital by, you know, let's say riding on the UPI rails for making payments, etc. I'm already over, you know, like aware of what's going on in the market with respect to digital light. So I think the first and foremost is the awareness levels are pretty high on the MSME side with respect to digital. Second is even the adoption levels are pretty high. So they would like to go ahead and ad adopt, you know, more digital services. Now, the obvious challenge that they have is, you know, engaging with a single service provider or a couple of service providers rather than going around shopping with, uh, you know, multiple service providers. Because look, uh, the fact of the matter is that the SME or the MSME will not have a CTO or will not have a tech function or will not have, you know, a detailed infosec you know, kind of policies that they would have, right? So these are small units, you know, couple of people in finance, etc. at best, and they would do basic services, right? So therefore, it comes down to they would like to be with a service provider that provides them all the solutions. And that's where we kind of believe is, is our sweet spot and we have a play. So typically, you know, an SME would like to engage, some of them would like to engage in classic old school uh, you know, internet banking platform, but which is more, you know, engaging than what has been historically. So other than just enabling, you know, them to make payments, they would also provide information which is more real time than it would have been in the past. So clearly, I think what has happened is over the last, I think, 
a uh, couple of years is apis have been a big big player wherein uh, you know not only software companies or technology or startup companies like e samuday but also msmes have started accepting or adopting apis for not only initiating payments but also receiving information right because for them cash and carry is going to be the way to kind of engage in commerce so i think that's the first thing that is in- increasingly getting adopted by the msmes the second piece which we've seen is partnerships right so for example today a bulk of the msmes and ms uh, smes would be on you know platforms like erp platforms like tally zoho etc right uh, and they would like to engage with service providers especially banks through those platforms so dbs has done a lot of work with tally historically and we keep on building on that pipe itself so i think that's the other piece which you know we believe is a big enabler right uh, an msme or sme has a limited way of you know kind of interacting or would want to interact through a single you know kind of pipe and i think the whole integration with uh, these service providers really helps i think the other piece is driving commerce right or enabling them to become far more nimbler in terms of the way they interact with their customers and even reducing cost so our engagement with odex which is again a, a platform on the on the shipping side where they've enabled the freight forwarders to kind of get online uh, pay dues to uh, the ports as well as to the the ship liners i think that's also been a big driver for us so again not only enabling you know simple banking but also enabling them to kind of pay more effectively to network participants or to network operators and last but not the least which is most important in my view is is how do we enable them to actually get more financing and and there our partnership with uh, you know likes of credible etc supply chain platforms have been very very effective uh, we clearly believe that uh, that's the space which will grow significantly where you use data to actually identify how much you can lend and i think the the network the ondc network will be a good overplay uh, in terms of providing information and doing you know um, uh, merchant cash advances which again is a big opportunity in my view you move away from your traditional classical finance based approach or financial based approach in terms of lending to more cash flow based and i think there is a significant play out here in my view so these are a couple of things that 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 we've done in the space and we clearly believe that uh, there is significant opportunity like i mentioned you know the forces of change are just moving in the right direction and adoption is clearly increasing as we see across uh, you know categories yeah but mr dalal how can small businesses leverage digital banking solutions to streamline their financial operations and improve their efficiency i think a uh, couple of things we've seen so like uh, we have a online platform for account opening which is called oas we leverage that significantly in terms of getting them to open accounts digitally that is one second is even engaging with banks in terms of you know product documentation so historically these are all documents that they needed to sign but now you can do e signing very simply so again uh, opening accounts as well as engaging with the banks to kind of go ahead and adopt particular solutions so that's also been done digitally the other piece where we've seen significant adoption is where fintech players are there there are digital escrow solutions which are available which is again a big move in my view not only uh, uh, fintech players or startups but also nbfcs want to adopt that so as you know there are significant number of nbfcs in the country small and large who kind of catering to the credit needs so even there we believe that you know they adopt these solutions to become far more nimbler because they don't want to kind of increase a number of people at their end uh, but they want to clearly be far more efficient and be first to market so again we believe that's a that's a big play out there the other piece is using data for trade so so the other piece which we clearly see a, a, a big move or shift is how do you leverage the trade data between a large anchor and an msme and leverage that trade data to provide them financing not only for goods that they've shipped out but actually even provide them financing for actually manufacturing which in my view is a massive gap in the market today so if you look at it on an msme today actually gets financing only when they actually ship out goods but they don't get financing when they actually need it so again we leverage that data and we provide them temporary financing for the purpose of manufacturing goods and then the same can be you know kind of paid off when they get uh, the funds from the anchor so these are some of the solutions that we've gone ahead and kind of you know provided to the msmes last but not the least is on the cross border side again fx is one classic play wherein the msmes would want to kind of get the information online with respect to fx sports right so we've integrated with various platforms as well as provided on our own online banking platform so for them the adoption is far more easier rather than going ahead and engaging or integrating with a third party platform so we think clearly uh, the online account opening the product engagement as well as uh, the lending basis data along with fx these are three four things that we clearly believe are you know a, a 
a big plus for the MSMEs. Last but not the least, I think the great example that I would like to place out here is the eBay bill. We have a lot of MSMEs which basically actually obtain financing using eBay bill rather than give physical documents to the bank, right? So, so the bank has to indeed verify that financing is given for, uh, you know, um, the right types of goods. So, so eBay bill is a great instrument, or even uh, e-invoice is a great instrument which can be submitted digitally by the MSMEs such that they can obtain financing digitally and quicker, right? So. Again, these are some examples which, you know, uh, which I could give wherein we've leveraged technology as well as, you know, what the regulator has done to simplify for MSMEs and which is actually helping them in a big way to become more efficient and sell more also. Uh, Mr. Koshi, I wanted to come to you next and uh, get your views on the importance of these small and medium enterprises to adapt to the current trends in the market. Now these trends, they include like more businesses are moving to the online, chatbots are becoming crucial, businesses are adjusting to millennials, social media basically um, is the king. What are your views on that? As I explained to you earlier, the biggest advantage of an open network is it encourages innovation and specialization. And there is room for multiple enterprises to come and be a part of this larger network, either as a buying platform or a selling platform. Today, if uh, uh, you know <clears throat> somebody wants to set up a buying application, he cannot do by itself because he will have to go and tie up with all sellers, which is very, very uh, competitive and very difficult. And the sellers may not want to get connected with many buyer applications. The beauty of an unbundled architecture in an open network is that you might see some very specialized enterprises coming to help, um, like you said, uh, probably just to help the college students buy what is relevant for them. Or let's say that to buy, uh, for example, uh, to help, let's say, um, people from, let's say, South India or Tamil Nadu who are based in Northern India to sort of uh, source out goods which are relevant for some, uh, for their cultural festival, whether it's Pongal or whether it's Onam. But, uh, you know, today, these kind of innovations to really address a diverse kind of buy buyers is practically impossible because uh, the platform centric model led will not allow them to do it. So we are essentially getting some standard cookie cutter solutions from large platform, which are looking at some, like I said, very limited cross section of uh, buyers. And now with the with the advent of, you know, AI, chat GPT or uh, uh, you know, machine learning and on virtual reality, all these new tools, there is a humongous amount of potential for innovation, which is going to help uh, diverse kind of buyers uh, uh, to be presented with options, which will choose the, which will sort of meet their requirement. So this is why, uh, you know, you would see um, uh, the possibilities exploding for uh, small enterprises, even to come and develop such application on the right side. And also the um, the sellers also will be able to have very specialized kind of offer because if they realize that this request is coming from something that is focused on the college students, probably they may offer a scheme which they feel that could be relevant for them. Or if it is relevant for some uh, you know customers of some particular uh, you know ethnic background and cultural background, then they might be able to develop some schemes. So what I'm pointing out is the, uh, the the unbundling and interoperability enable in an open network is going to drive humongous amount of innovation and specialization, especially using this modern tools. And um, the any uh, enterprise who is trying to access a broader market will have to plan for it and um, have their strategies to uh, sort of leverage from it. Uh, Mr. Pai, what do you think? How do you see the importance for the SMEs to adapt to these current trends that are there in the market? So I want to unbundle the question into two parts. Uh, one is um, let's look at the buyers because eventually all businesses are built to sell, right? We want to be able to produce and sell and make more margins as we go, uh, go about our lives. So let's look at the buyer side. I think um, the example that uh, Koshi brought up, which is specialization, right? Uh, let's have buyer platforms that are very, very specialized and uh, doing the best representing their buyer population to the entire producing population right on the open network this requires uh, you know different kind of thinking i mean uh, building apps or buyer platforms uh, for students for uh, south indians in north india living in north india 
uh, festivals and all of that, right? So that's on the buyer side. And until there is innovation on the buyer side, uh, we cannot expect um, you know the the sellers to get uh, digitized at the pace that we expect to digitize them, right? So because it's only uh, dhanda that grows the uh, digital prowess of any um, um, any business. So on the seller side, um, and what uh, Divyesh brought up, uh, banks like uh, DBS. I mean, uh, technically, all banks in India are um, you know engineered to be uh, very very customer centric, as in uh, they work with the businesses to create economic growth. Maybe in the last 20 years, we've gotten into what is called as lazy banking, which is uh, primarily looking at it from head offices. But banks can now, banks and um, in a lot of companies have been working on the ERPs and uh, digital systems with the SMEs. That need, uh, that integration layer with, between those systems and ONDC kind of networks is happening as we speak. And we already have uh, more than uh, uh, lakhs of uh, sellers on ONDC. Uh, whose uh, entire product catalog is on ONDC. So it's most important that we now have a number of diverse buying applications that come up uh, that uh, bring um, you know um, buyers into this open network. Sellers will uh, innovate. I mean, that much I'm very, very confident about India. If there is a, a, a deal to be made, sellers will innovate. They will go out of their way uh, to make the customer as happy because that essentially is how uh, small business is operated in India. I mean, it is about uh, customer service and uh, getting that cash through the door. Um, of course, there will always be frauds and others that will be there. And we have enough systems in the banking system, um, you know, in the financial services industry to, you know, monitor frauds, even identifying frauds, all of that we have, right? It's about coming together of all these different capabilities that we've already built over years and years of digitization and information systems in India, uh, the banks being the primary. And all these different expertise that we have in India from our working with uh, best practices, right? I mean, through our IT services industry, uh, we have many, many people with best practices of what needs to happen. Uh, we have great programmers. We need to build ONDC as a network of the people, right? Uh, which I think needs to start now. And I uh, want to urge anybody watching this, if you want to build a buyer application, I think ONDC is uh, ready for you. Right. And there are also a lot of challenges that SMEs face, like whether it is in terms of regulatory framework or its access to the finance. Mr. Dalal, I'd like to come to you next. What do you think are some of the common financial challenges that are faced by small businesses in adopting digital solutions? And how can your bank help address these effectively? So look, I think, uh, you know, I, I alluded to some of them earlier, but I think the first and foremost is, uh, you know, given that they have limited resources, they have to allocate on, you know, kind of doing business more effectively. So clearly for them, uh, adoption of digital is, is a must, but, but they want something which is uh, small, nimbler, quicker, a more agile, if I could use that word, in terms of integration. So I think that's the first piece in my view. Secondly, uh, they wouldn't have the resources and the bandwidth to even integrate with multiple service providers. So yes, they would like to be with an ERP, which links to, to let's say, ONDC network, as well as to a shipping line, as well as to an FX platform, as well as to a bank platform, right? They would like all of it rather than kind of breaking it down into various parts. So I think that's the other piece in my view. Uh, which is which is a key challenge that they have and they would like it to be there the third piece is it's not just you know smes and msmes but even startups right the regulation the, the regulation around you know what do you uh, what is doable what is not doable in terms of investments when you get what are the reg filings that you need to do for fc gpr fctr etc all of that right so somebody who gives them advice with respect to the fact that what is it that they need to do right so they would build a fantastic product but what is it that they need to do once they do the fundraise, right? So, so some of those reg challenges, they will need to kind of be aware of. Now, whether they are a cross-border platform, some of those are great, but in terms of what they can do, cannot do, uh, regulations around LRS, et cetera, all of that, right? So, so, so there is element around that in my view. And last but not the least is like, which is the right partner to choose, right? Because it's most important for all of them to kind of go with the right partner. They would not want to kind of integrate and then kind of pull back. So this is where we kind of step in in a big way, right? So in kind of having integration with service providers, which are important to them. So it's not necessary that you have to come to the bank platform to make a payment. It's not necessary for you to get the best FX rate to, you know, to come to the bank platform. So you could do that with various multiple service providers. And it's not even necessary to get financing uh, that you have to come to a bank platform, right? You could do that from, you know, a merchant 
uh, from a merchant side itself you can do it through a gateway or you could do it through you know buyers or your seller side apps also right so there are various services that we provide which we believe will help the you know uh, the msmes grow without kind of getting into the tangle of you know integrating spending time resource and money right which we think is most important so some of these are challenges which i think we've addressed but yeah it's a journey in my view uh, you only get better and you know as you kind of go deeper in because again as you know i've seen over the last couple of years is that in, you know like metros behave very differently from bharat and their requirements are also very different so so if you kind of get into the little bit of integrity and what they need uh, you realize that both work a little differently and but priorities are same right how can you do more business how can you be more effective and how can you sell more so so it's a journey and i think some of the stuff we've done uh, in terms of partnerships is clearly helping us uh, but yeah i mean would like to do more with uh, you know anup and team also thanks Right, uh, Mr. Koshi. We know that with ONDC, SMEs can set up their own digital stores. They can reach a wider customer base. How has been the role of ONDC in digitizing the SMEs? See, like uh, like we were saying. Um, uh, okay, first of all, the ONDC network is supposed to give equal opportunity to everybody, which is uh, you know the protocol has enabled that. But at the same time, we realize that many of the small and um, MSME sector enterprises, um, and or even farmer producer organization, which are also small enterprises, may not be equally endowed, equally capable to take advantage of that. So, as a additional effort in helping the small and medium enterprises, we have had have multiple uh, uh, initiative. One is like we realize that there is an education process that is needed. Uh, we have launched what we call an ONDC Academy which is giving free educational support for small enterprises to take uh, to leverage this it's available in multiple languages uh, already about four or five languages are there and we are going to have it practically in every language in our country which is actually for them to uh, take advantage of it second thing is that we have also uh, started working with um, uh, ministries uh, you know the central ministries and state ministries to develop schemes to uh, provide uh, even financial support, even handholding support for the MSMEs who are not so digitally capable to sort of digitize their uh, you know, catalogs, have good processes established, have a good uh, inventory management system, help them to make the invoice that will be sort of um, uh, relevant in an online uh, world. Help them to create a shipping bill that will help them to, uh, you know, send it across the country and probably in long term across the country too and other countries too. So for there again, um, you know, the uh, many of the end of, um, ministries have already coming out with the scheme, and we you would have heard the announcement by the MSME minister that uh, this is going to be um, something that is going to be launched soon. And we are seeing similar thing from agriculture ministry. We are seeing that. Uh, um, from SIDBI, NABARD, and uh, you know such developmental institutions. Uh, in fact, we have uh, worked with the Ministry of Commerce to have a nodal person from every state, uh, senior person, who would work with the variety of um, uh, you know entities to provide this this extensive support to uh, you know the MSME sector to leverage because it's going to be a journey. And here again, it is going to be some of them are digitally more mature, so they can come in fast. In fact, even to help uh, them to assess what is the digital maturity, we work with the Quality Council of India, and it's going to be again launched in the next couple of weeks, a digital readiness certification, which will help uh, the, the small enterprises to assess uh, what's the kind of readiness they are and also understand what's the kind of improvement they have made. Because like you very correctly identified earlier, it is again a complete transformation of the way business is being done. And we should, it is not just having them some kind of a ready-made application. It's about helping them to realign and reorganize their business processes and also even have their very different kind of uh, strategies even to, ex, uh, you know, even for marketing. You know, uh, now that more uh, this is available through a wide range of buying application with the power to the seller to go and promote without um, paying any hefty fee to any of this application, they will have to think about how they can even use the variety of um, the social media. And uh, even for some of the people to, uh, you know, even reach across, we even launched a WhatsApp based uh, bot 
uh, where any seller can, you know, anybody who small enterprise want to know more about it can send a high message to this number, and then they can have a you know message based interaction to uh, understand how to leverage. Because as I said in the beginning, while digital commerce is there, you and I might be regular users. The seller wise uh, participation today is only less than five percent. So we are talking about, and that too, um, uh, in the small and micro enterprise, it's even small. So it's all a question of helping them this as journey and not like a magic solution. Right. Uh, uh, we are completely out of time, but Mr. Pai, can I get your last word on the role of e-samudai in digitizing SMEs in a very few words, please? Um, so uh, like Koshi said, I think uh, you know, SMEs are going through a journey and it's a journey that has begun decades ago, actually with the digitization of the bank, core banking and all of that. Uh, and those uh, journeys are being handholded by a number of agencies. Uh, we are keen to work with all the agencies on the seller side uh, and all the agencies um, on the buyer side where our focal area is the districts of India. So what we're saying is each district is unique and we, have, we are re-engineering the way um, you know, uh, the digital networks are built instead of one big central server that has got common configurations. We are reconfiguring the, uh, the commerce systems to have every district to be have it, to having its own configurations. Right. And we are um, willing to work and wishing to work and also engaging with all the seller uh, participants and buyer participants, um, as well as the institutions, the banks and uh, 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 the government institutions and uh, so on to the incubation facilities, the colleges and all of those to come together on a district digital economy mission, right? Which is reimagining digital as a local uh, enabler, all interconnected on this open network where we are trading information and knowledge with each other. And it's a global network. It is going to spread out of India, go to the US and other places where there's a demand for these kind of platforms, uh, these kind of, uh, you know, uh, people-led uh, initiatives. I mean, that was what Web3 was meant to be. It, it got hijacked uh, by the financialization, but I think uh, this is a new version of Web3. And the Web3 itself is looking for regulation, looking for more structure in the way we are going about doing things. So I think it's uh, you know a coming together of many trends like Divesh pointed out. Um, and um, you know India 2023 now is, is bang in the center of uh, these trends uh, that are going to change the world, in my view. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was a very, very insightful discussion. And I hope that all the SMEs can utilize all the efforts by the ecosystem and get a boost and adopt to digital transformation as quickly as possible. And not only boost their own companies, but also in the towards the end, get a boost to the entire economy. Thank you very much. With that, we come to the end of the podcast. Yeah. DBS Bank and Money Control present Small Business to Smart Business. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.